Hello, welcome back or welcome to my channel. It's Sunshine Lorena and the wheel of TBR is going to be choosing my April TBR. Hi guys, so yes, it is another month. Another month is coming up and I need to choose my TBR. And like I said at the start of the year, I want to try and randomize it in different ways. And this time I'm going to do like a, a wheel of TBR type thing. So various different booktubers do like different variations of this, but I found an online spinner. I've popped in some prompts um, and etc. on this, some genres etc. on this. There's 12 of them. We're going to be spinning them and we're going to be choosing my TBR from that. Um, there is one book that I do need to take you through for a book club pick which I'll get to in the moment um, but for the spins I will do four however I cannot use that one for the book club pick so in total there will be five books um, that I choose for this. My reading has been a little bit better this month. We are halfway through the month basically so I have three books in, on the go currently which I do believe I will finish them. One of them is basically finished anyway the other two I do think I'll get through. One book has been finished this month so I should have at least four at the end of the month and um, I've still not started Babel guys. As you know it's been my last few months TBR but it will not be on this one because I have high hopes that I'm gonna start it, that I'll get to it, we'll see. But anyway that's enough of the rambling. First of all I'm gonna just quickly take you through um, the book for Chloe Reads Books Crime Scene Corner Book Club. I always, that's a mindful, but I always get there in the end. Um, so I haven't read any of the last picks the last two months because it's books that I've already read. So April's pick for the book club is Mindhunter Inside the FBI's Elite Serial Crime Unit, so non-fiction. Um, it's written by jo John E. Douglas and Mark Allshaker. I am going to be using the audiobook from Script because they have it, thank goodness. As always, always have a link if you want to sign up for Script. You get two months free and I get some Something. I can't remember the exact rules but you get two months um, free if you ever wanted to sign up to that so that's good so audiobook you know at least not so much physical books because like I said my my reading has not been great the last few months um, but yes this is a non-fiction I haven't read any non-fiction in March at all as I'm currently filming this on the 16th um, and I don't know if I will so I am trying to be more conscious of non-fiction um, this year and read a little bit more um, so this is definitely going to help with that this month. So uh, this one it chronicles um, Johnny Douglas's 25 year career in the FBI investigative support unit where he used psychological profiling to delve into the minds of the country's most notorious serial killers and criminals um, and it's been used, this is the basis for an upcoming Netflix series but I don't know if it's actually already out I assume um, so yeah, uh, in chilling detail, the legendary Mindhunter take us behind the scenes of some of his most gruesome, fascinating and challenging cases and into the darkest recess of our worst nightmare. He became a legendary figure in law enforcement, pursuing some of the most notorious sadistic serial killers of our time. The man who hunted prostitutes for a sport in the woods of Alaska, the land uh, child murder and Seattle's Green River Killer, the case that nearly cost Douglas his life. Um, and it also says, I didn't know this, as the model for Jack Crawford's In the Science of the Lamb, Douglas has confronted, interviewed and studied scores of serial killers and assassins including Charles Manson, Ted Bunty and Ed Gein, who dressed in stuff in victims' peeled skill, skin. Um, yeah, so it sounds really interesting to kind of get these behind the scenes thoughts of these various different cases that he worked on. And I think it's going to be an interesting but challenging read. Um, so yes, that's that. Now let's get onto the wheel. So let me, first of all, let's start the screen recorder. Okay, so here we are. So now you should be able to see on the screen now my little wheel spinner. As you see, um, we're just going to ignore the colours. I know some people use colours if you land on it twice, you add a book on to TBR, etc. But I'm not doing that considering how bad my reading has been recently. So like I said, four spins. So in total, I will have five books for the month. Um, various different ones here. Um, I took some of ones that I've used previously on like the jar etc but to highlight I have on here Goodreads lowest rated which I've never done before. Um, I have Italian books specifically because I do want to read one Italian book this year and you know this is going to be like the fourth month of the year and I've not even attempted reading one yet so I think it's kind of good to have as a prompt so if it comes up it will force me to read one. Um, and yeah, the other ones are pretty kind of standard ones that are on there. So let's just tap and spin. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? Oh, 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 we are getting five star prediction. Okay, so for five star prediction, um, you may or may not know, depending on how long you've been watching these videos, last year, 
at the start of the year, guys. Um, I did a video of five star projections. There was five and my plan was to read them all in 2022. And I did not finish those five because, you know, put a book in a list I, is a guarantee of me not actually finishing, actually reading the whole list. Um, so this is one of those um, and it means I only have one left on my shelves from that video and then I'll be able to do another five star projection video and try to stick to those. Um, but that is The Lying Lives of Adults from Elena Ferranti. If you've been watching my TBR videos last few months, this did feature in February and I obviously did not get to it. Um, but Netflix did a, a kind of mini series adaptation of this book. Um, which I really want to watch. It is in Italian, you can watch it dubbed in English, um, but uh, as you, some of you may or may not know, um, my husband's Italian, so I do speak Italian, so I do try and watch Italian programs when they come on Netflix, um, so I do really want to watch it, but obviously want to read the book first. Um, also, I just hate dubbing, like, I just, I was gonna say it, I actually hate watching things dubbed, even if I don't know the language, so like Squid Game, watched it in Korean, with English subtitles obviously, because I don't speak Korean, but you know, I just, I can't do dubbing anyway. So I don't, back to the book in question, this, when I saw the trailer for the mini Netflix series, it's set like in the, the 90s, which wasn't clear from the synopsis, and I don't know if the book actually is in the 90s, but um, I have read the, the Neapolitan Court Lit by her, and that takes over different decades, but at the very end, you kind of come up to present times, but it does seem like she doesn't set her books always in the present. Um, but yes, this was her latest release that came out a few years ago and it's been on my shelves for a little while. Um, so on the back it says, Two years before leaving home, my father said to my mother that I was very ugly. Giovanna's pretty face has changed, is turning into the face of an ugly, spiteful adolescent. But is she seeing things as they really are? Where must she look to find her true reflection and a life she can claim as her own? Giovanna's search leads her to two kindred cities that fear and detest one another, the Naples of the Heights, which assumes a mask of refinement, and the Naples of the Depths, a place of excess and vulgarity. Adrift, she facilitates between the two cities, falling into one and then climbing to, back into the other, but neither seemed to offer her any answers. So yes, it's about Divided Naples, this book, in terms of the, the series when I saw the trailer. Um, it looks like her aunt is from the Naples of the Depths, but she is kind of growing up of Naples of the Heights. Um, but yes, it's going to be interesting. It's literary fiction. I really enjoy the Neapolitan Quartlet, and I've also read The Lost Daughter by Elena Ferrante, and I do find her writing really beautiful. I enjoy her books, so looking forward to this one. Now let's go for spin number two. So record and let's go. Fantasy, okay, it is the year of the fantasy. Um, it is the year of the fantasy, so perfect. Okay, so fantasy, um, I was actually between two books. I almost went with the other one that's actually been on a couple of TBRs this year. Um, I must quickly show you, it was A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Island. So I have the second one as an arc that came out in January that I need to read, but obviously I need to read this first. Um, so which is why I was thinking about this one. But I also have another fantasy arc that came out the end of last year, like the kind of the reprint. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, so I have that one to read. Um, and I think I should get to that one. In my defense, literally like the day before, I think it was to come out, I got it, so and it was approved. So you know what I mean? It's not like I had like plenty of time to read it before. It actually was really released um, and that is anyway Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Um, this has been making its rounds on booktube, a lot of people really really enjoyed it. It was originally indie published and then it actually got picked up and that's how I got the art given the second publishing of it. Um, and yes lots of people enjoy it. Um, so since I have it as an ARC it's on my Kindle I, which I needed, I realised that I don't also have like an ebook on this list so I kind of think I need an ebook um, for when I'm like you know, going around places and stuff. It's easy to have my Kindle in my bag travel with it to read it so yes this is why I decided to just switch it and then also this immediately gets a book off of my arcs and net galley whereas if I read the other one I still have to read the other one you know you get it you get it guys so this is um high fantasy with a double shot of self reinventation um, so worn out after decades of packing in steel and raising hell, Vic the or Orc barbarian crashes out the warrior's life with one final score. A forgotten legend, a fabled artifact, and an unreasonable amount of hope led her to the streets of Thun, where she plans to open the first coffee shop the city has ever seen. Um, however, her dreams of a fresh start pulling shots instead of swinging swords are hardly a sure bet. Old frenemies and Thun's shady underbelly may just upset her plans. To finally build something that will last, Viv will need to make new partners and a different kind of resolve. A hot cup of fantasy 
slice of life with a dob of romantic froth. Um, so yes, I just, I love the sound of it. It sounds like it's going to be a bit cosy as well. Um, it just, it sounds fun. Lots of people enjoy it. Um, I think I'm going to really like it. So I think this was the better one to go with. Um, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to like put some lighter ones in between because like, you know, Mindhunter, very heavy. The Lion Life for Adults, again, it's literary fiction, so it's not exactly light. Um, so trying to bring something in that's going to be a little bit more like an enjoyable read, something lighter. It's spring after all. And let's go for spin number three. What are we doing? Oh, oh. Audiobook, guys. Audiobook. I love a good audiobook. That's perfect. And for my audio pick, um, I went into Audible because I have been really bad at um, using my Audible credits. Um, so I'm like, you know, I've got books in there as well to really read. So I picked one that I already had on my list. And that is A Glasgow Kiss by Sophia um, Gravia. Um, so like I said with Legend of the Lattes, I'm trying to have a little bit of lightness in my books. Not all heavy. So again, I went with this because it is going to be light. It looks like it's going to be funny. Um, and it's just going to kind of give me something light um, to to read it during the month um, when I'm like going to the gym I try and listen to some of my audiobooks and stuff as well because my reading has not been great as I've said several times during this video um, but in this one there is nothing romantic about dating a Glasgow kiss a headbutt or a strike with a head to someone's sensitive area so basically a headbutt to like the head or whatever a Glasgow kiss um, which when I saw the title I was like this is going to be interesting um, so yes I like it gives you a little bit of the definition there so if you don't know what that is you know um, but meet Zara Smith 29 single and muddling her way through life as a trainee nurse in Glasgow with 30 fast approaching she's determined to do whatever it takes to find love or at least someone to sext Cheered on by her best friends Ashley and Raj, Sarah embarks on a string of dates, es dating escapades that are hila as hilarious as they are disastrous. From online dating to blind dates, hometown hookups to flirty bartenders, nothing is off limits. But when Dr. Tom Adams, aka Sugar Daddy, <laughs> shows interest in a game-changing moment, Zara has had a crush on Tom since her very first date at this the aesthetics cl clinic she works at part-time. As things heat up between them, Zara can't help but wonder, is this it? Or is it another disaster waiting to happen? Um, it says, filthy, hilarious and painfully relatable. Zara Smith is Bridget Jones for the millennial generation. Um, so yes, that sounds great, high hopes. Um, the comparison to Bridget Jones, like, this is what I need in April. I definitely it's spring I like to lean more start leaning more towards romances anyway when it comes spring to summer um, and like I said light book easy to read um, and it sounds like it's gonna be hilarious and now let's go for the fourth and a final spin what are we getting oh free choice okay stayed on free choice oh, that's good that is really good finally free choice and I was like oh I have a choice or what I'm gonna go with um but I remembered on my li the library my library's app I have an audiobook on hold for It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover and um, I know I said I would read this in February I did not read it just ignore that fact but yes and it's due to come up at like early April even if somebody kind of keeps it a little bit longer you know I should have it in April and um, I know I have the physical book but sometimes you know it's good to have the audiobook as well and um, this isn't like a light romance anyway so I think the audiobook would kind of help to read along with it um so yes this is what I, what I chose I'm actually gonna read it this month guys April I will I will especially if I get that hold because like there's always like a long list for that audiobook so once I have it I'm gonna read it um, but yes, this is also being adapted into is it a film or a series? It's a film. Blake Lively is in it, and I can't remember who the male car the male interest is that they've chosen. But yes, I want to read it before it's adapted. And obviously, there is like the second one, which is a prequel to this, I think. Um, but anyway, we follow Lily, um, and she hasn't always had it easy. But that's never stopped her from working hard for her life she wants. She's come a long way from the small town in Maine where she grew up. She graduated from college, moved to Boston, and started her own business. So when she feels a spark with a gorgeous neurosurgeon named Ryle Kinnaird, everything in Lily's life suddenly seems almost too good to be true. Ryle is assertive, stubborn and maybe even a little arrogant. He's also sensitive, a brilliant and has a total soft spot for Lily. But Ryle's complete aver aversion to relationships is disturbing. As questions about her new relationship overwhelm her, so do the thoughts of Atlas Corrigan, her first love and a link to the past she left behind. He was her kindred spirit, her protector. When Atlas suddenly reappears, everything Lily built 
has built with Ryle is threatened. Um, so yes, there is like a little bit of like a triangle situation going on there. Um, I don't know actually what happens in this one. I know people really enjoy it. I've only ever read one Colleen Hoover book and that was Verity, which was different from the other one. So looking forward to reading this. I also have Ugly Love on my shelves as well. Um, but yeah, everyone keeps speaking about her. So I do want to give her actual, what she's known for books, a go. Um, and that is it. That is all the books that I've chosen this month. Five. I'm pretty happy with that choice. Um, let me know if you've read any of these, which ones you should prioritise because as you know, I've not been finished at my TPRs. Um, so if you, there's any that you think I have to read, please let me know down below. But yes, thank you so much. Comment down below. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye! Um, so it's mine hander, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to find it. I'm wasting so much time. What am I doing? Na, 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 na. I have mind.